Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Cynthiana, Kentucky. Will you pray with us, please? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your love, for your grace. We, we thank you for this time to worship together by way of uh, YouTube and Facebook and other ways. Will you move in a, a wonderful way on our behalf? Interrupt this coronavirus? Will you disrupt its, its spread? Will you deliver us, please? We thank you for your healing touch. We know that there is healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. Will you bring that healing and that recovery to our community, to our state, to our nation, even to our world? We trust you. We offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Nathan. We're trying to, to feature our children and youth during these weeks when we're uh, having our worship service by way of camera and the internet instead of live. But we, uh, we're so grateful for these youngsters coming and, and helping out. Uh, very much a part of our church right now. Uh, a lot of folks think that, that the children and youth are the church of the future. Well, they're the church right now. And so, uh, anyway, just wanted to uh, thank them. Thank for Beth Chafee for her working on all this and Doug for his sound work. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I want to share with you as we're just a couple of weeks away from Easter, some of the... Uh, this, I might be the only person who gets excited over this, but the, the whole thing of the evidence of the resurrection. Years ago, when growing up, I would sing the song with our, our church, He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me, He talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, uh, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. Well, as I got older, I began asking the simple question, is that the only way I know that Jesus is alive? And I started doing a little research and found out that we have lots and lots of evidence for the resurrection. That some of the evidence is just the fact that Jesus did die on the cross. There's, there's some uh, people who believe that Jesus only passed out. And so the simple question is, okay, then where is the body of him eventually having died when he you know, came back uh, to consciousness. Uh, so this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this, I, I want to just share with you one piece of evidence of Jesus and the resurrection. Just one. And that is one of the eyewitnesses to the resurrection. We overlooked this fellow for a long time. In John's gospel, he writes in chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, that Jesus did many other things that were not written in, in his gospel, but these particular things were written so that we would know Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Son of God. And so the question then becomes, as you read through the gospel of John, how do these stories in particular help me to understand Jesus is the Son of God? Well, these particular details, out of all the ones that could be, why these? Well, it just so happens that John is the only one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John's the only one that records for us the gentleman who took Jesus down off the cross. We see there in chapter 19, verse 38, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate granted permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus, who had, come, who had first come to him by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. And so John is the only one that gives that little tidbit that Nicodemus was one of the two men that brought Jesus down off the cross. Isaiah prophesies that Jesus will, will have a grave of a rich man. That's Joseph. But Nicodemus, why does John, out of all the people, out of all the details John could have explained, why does he make a point of telling us Nicodemus was one of the ones who took Jesus down off the cross that was entrusted with the dead body of Jesus. Why? So, we're told here that he was the one who came to Jesus by night. In chapter 3, we get that story. Nicodemus comes and says, we know that you are from God because of all the, the miraculous signs you do. And then Jesus' reply is, truly, truly, I say to you, you must be born again. Well, and, and that starts the whole conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is telling him, I don't understand these things. I don't understand the whole thing about the spirit. And, and Jesus says, well, it's like the wind. You see where this, the wind comes from and where it's going, but you don't see the wind itself. It's just like the, the Holy Spirit. And so in that conversation, Nicodemus says, I don't understand. And Jesus' reply is, are you the teacher of Israel and don't understand these things? 
in the language of the Israelites, in that language, the Hebrew and the Aramaic, they do not have the wording that we have in English if we have what we call the comparative and the superlative. In other words, he's the, the good horn player, or he's better horn player. He's the best horn player. They, they don't have that better and best. And so if they want to say he's the best one, what they say is he's the horn player. And that's what Jesus did with Nicodemus. When Nicodemus says, I don't understand this, Jesus' reply is, are you the teacher of Israel and don't understand this? So Jesus tells us in that little sentence, that one phrase, that one word, that Nicodemus was the number one teacher in the entire nation of Israel. Now, that might be important, might not, but it does tell us that the entire nation saw Nicodemus as the key leader theologically, the key leader to explain the scriptures, the key leader in the entire nation. And so this is the one that we're told later came to the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was meeting. They were all uh, trying to figure out in chapter six, seven, we read this, where they were trying to figure out how to trip up Jesus. And Nicodemus said, well, why don't we bring him in and listen to him ourselves firsthand? Because we don't condemn anyone who we cannot hear for ourselves. And so they simply scolded him in reply. But we can see the pattern that Nicodemus is leaning more toward Jesus, leaning more toward becoming a disciple of Jesus. So in this point, he is... Uh, a disciple of Jesus. He is taking him down off the cross. However, he's also the teacher of Israel. And so it's very simple. When Matthew records for us that Jesus died, and when they, uh, when the Sanhedrin came to the guards and said, we want you to do this. We want you to tell the officials that the disciples came and stole away the body while we were sleeping. Now I want you just to play that scenario with me for a moment. The guards say, the disciples came and stole away the body. The disciples reply with, well, how could we? Jesus' body was in the hands of your number one teacher. So in all of the possibilities, God made sure that the dead body of Jesus was entrusted into the hands of the number one teacher of Israel. The number one teacher of the Jews who would bring any sort of questioning or if it was a fraud, would be the first one to spread it to the entire nation. I don't think that's an accident. I don't think that's a mistake. And I think it's a piece of evidence that later is why we have so much proof of Jesus' resurrection. If you can prove that Jesus did not rise from the dead, then you can pull the rug out from under all of Christianity. We've had a number of people try. We've had a number of folks do the research and every single one of them come back a converted disciple of Jesus. One of the pieces of evidence that they discover is the, the whole reliability of the witnesses. The witnesses. And this witness is undisputed. He's the teacher of Israel, the leader of the Jewish people, and he's entrusted with the dead body of Jesus to make sure that nobody can take it and start a, a rumor. And so I just want to share that with you, that uh, we have evidence of the resurrection. Jesus is alive. We're moving toward Easter. We're excited. He is alive. And Paul even tells us that the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. And so do not get discouraged. Do not be afraid because the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you. And now at this time, we'd like uh, Nathan to share with us one more song and wish you the very best on this day as you worship with us here at First United Methodist Church in Cynthia. Nathan, please.